we are in LaSalle. Stayed at Pilot, just got showered, just got a pre-trip. And we are on our way to deliver our first car. And we brought the boss with this week. Hey guys. So the BMW we picked up in Des Moines, that was a joy. It was supposed to run for like 10 seconds and then uh, they said it would die. So we should be able to at least fire it up, drive a little ways, fire it up, drive a little ways. Well, that was not the case. It did not drive or start. It would spit and sputter, but it wouldn't start. And then when it would spit and sputter, you could get it in neutral so we could push it. But then as soon as it would stop doing the turnover cycle. Watch out, nice bag in the road. Um, once it would quit doing that start cycle, the starter, it would kick it right back into park so we couldn't move it. So, all in all, it took us about an hour and a half, well, about an hour and 45 minutes to get it loaded. Because we had to have a tech come out and show us how to override the transmission to get it to stay in neutral, but you had to have a booster pack on it, so it had power. Well, we got halfway to the truck pushing it down the parking lot. We had to push it like a block and a half. And uh, we got it halfway to the truck, and my booster pack died, so we had to go get another booster pack to make it to the truck. And we had to winch it on. So at least pushing it off would be easier. At least we downhill on the trailer. It was a good workout. We're really <laughs> out of shape. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> we, bought, we both thought we were gonna have a heart attack. Um, so then, uh, so yeah, we picked that one up in Des Moines. And then uh, we headed to uh, Muscatine. Picked up a Volkswagen. That one goes to Michigan. And then we got uh, another Amazon van to pick up, uh, what was that, Shireville? Yeah, Shireville, we gotta pick up another Amazon van. So we'll see if this one's actually a van or if uh, this turns into another box truck. But all in all, we got three vehicles, $1,225. We had a fourth one twice. But the first one called and canceled on us an hour after we booked it. That one was supposed to come out of Omaha. After he canceled, we booked another one at Omaha. And uh, he told me to text me, or text him, my information. So uh, he could get the email sent out with all the paperwork. Text him all the information. About 15 minutes later, he texted me back that they canceled that one. So we could have had a little over $1,600 on this backhaul at in Indiana, but we ended up with $1,225. So we still did better than $900 load out of Denver area. Kind of missed the 77 degrees that it was on Thursday in Denver. Yesterday was a little chilly. We're going to record loading up the BMW, but we're afraid the camera would freeze. <laughs> it was like 16 degrees. It was blowing pretty hard. And we were way out of shape. We're pushing that car. So all you're gonna be listening to is a bunch of puffing and puffing and probably a lot of bleeping and cussing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but right now, yeah, nothing too exciting. Just a just a fun load with the BMW. Learning how out of shape we are. The second car went good. The second car went really easy. That so, was a nice one. It's pretty hit and miss. You know, one makes up for the other. Yeah, well, that's what we picked up. We were. We were in and out of there in 15 minutes. Yep. And that was after finding out that they told us trucks go in and out of there all the time. We picked it up from my house and it was parked in their driveway. They told us trucks go down the roads all the time, but it's like a new addition of the town. And uh, the road just dead ends into a cul de sac, which is made for cars, not a truck. At least I've seen that on the GPS before we got there. And, uh, a little three-point turn and got back out of there. But yeah, we were out of there in 15 minutes or so, so that one made up for the first one. Yeah. So I think we will catch up with you guys later when we got something more interesting to talk about.
someone doesn't agree or whatever, but this is just how we do it, our two cents. Um, so for instance, like this loan, we already said we got 12.25, I think, for all the cars. Um, I'm just gonna pull right off the road. And um, we're only pulling them. Our first pickup was in Des Moines. And our second one was in Muscatine, which is south of like Walcott, the Iowa 80. And then our last pickup is in uh, Illinois, just Schreier uh, Schreierville, I think it is. And that one goes to Shipshawan. So we really don't have that many miles of pulling with the cars on. And I started, you know, but basically I started from Denver, went back home, which we live north of Sioux City. So it's not really off my route, heading back to Indiana. And like I said, you know, I could have got three vehicles out there that paid $900 total going back to Chicago. We now are basically deadheading two thirds of the way to Indiana and getting more money. So our kind of rule of thumb is, is we try and find cars that are 70 cents a mile or above. So on uh, Central Dispatch, we got the filter set at what, $300 for the total pay for the load. And that knocks out a whole bunch of those little short ones. Knocks out a bunch of the low paying ones, but there's still occasionally the little ones for 30, 40 cents a mile. Which your overall pay is not what you always have to look at either. Because, you know, you could get a $900 loan with three vehicles, but you're going a thousand miles. You know, you gotta look at how much per mile they pay. When they pay 30, 40 cents a mile, I mean, yeah, you're loaded, but you're not making any money between the wear and tear on your vehicle, the wind drag that you have, the loading and unloading, you know, that all takes time and that all costs you money too. Yeah, so we try and stick with, try and be loaded the least amount of miles with the max amount of pay, basically. Like uh, this Amazon van is three, 347 a mile. It's only, it pays four, 400, 400. Yeah. I think it's four something. I think it's 400 is what we got this Amazon van for. And it's like 115 miles, somewhere around there. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I'm deadheading way more. I'm getting way better fuel mileage. I'm not dealing with the rough riding of having all that weight on, the wear and tear in your truck, you know, all that stuff. And I don't know how many times, let's see, you went with me to Denver. And uh, the whole week, we had the laptop with, and Courtney sat on the laptop pretty much all week trying to find loads out of Denver. And I'm gonna guess you called 20 brokers. And a lot of these were that 30, 40 cents. And we kind of figure out, you know, what we want to bring it back. And if we could get like three vehicles out of Denver heading back say, to Omaha, Sioux City, if we could get bare minimum 50 cents a vehicle, we might have done it. And with the brokers out there, you'd call it, I mean, you can even get them up to come up like $25. As soon as you say something about doing it more, they're like, nope, I can find someone to do it cheaper. And then they pretty much hang up on you. We had over 20 brokers do that to us. So we deadheaded back to, uh, well, we ended up picking up a old uh, Winnebago, Winnebago, like a 1970 motorhome. And that's all we got, but we picked it up. Uh, did we pick it up by Lincoln? I think we picked that up somewhere kind of by Lincoln. Yeah. And that one went to, to Des Moines, which wasn't on our route. You know, it's three hours out of our way, but it paid seven hundred dollars. So on Saturday morning, we picked that up at the it was that a mechanic shop, a body shop type of thing. We picked it up Saturday morning, and the broker told us we couldn't deliver till Monday. So our plan was we were actually just gonna pick it up, us and take it back home by Sioux City, and then just deliver Monday morning. But I called the guy and asked him if uh, you know if we could do Saturday delivery by chance. And he was actually all ecstatic about it because if we delivered it on Monday, like the broker had told us we had to, if we would have delivered it on Monday, he would have had to take a time off work to meet us down at the storage yard that we had to deliver it to. So he was all ecstatic about us wanting to deliver it on Saturday. Well, when we delivered it on Saturday, that just gave me more room for Monday to find another car. And 
I'm gonna guess 90% of the time, like when I'm leaving, we do a lot of like Texas runs, um, Colorado. Colorado, been to Oregon once. Arizona. Every, yeah, yeah, Arizona. But all these lows, I'm pretty well deadheaded back to like Kansas or back just home and get loaded around home, like I said, Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Omaha, and get loads heading back to Chicago, and I end up getting more pay at the end of the week doing that than if I would have been loaded the whole time, and I'm saving that much more fuel. So, these guys that are taking, you know, vehicles for 30 cents a mile, just so they can, you know, get loaded as soon as they drop off, that's not always the wisest way, you know, the way I think, that's not the smartest. You can save fuel by running empty, you can always find loads, you know, farther, closer to where you want to go, and making more money and a lot of brokers you can deal with you know there's I write when I do his dispatching for him I write down on a piece of paper how much it is per mile where it's going you know whether it's an in-op or it's drivable because that all makes a difference too like the car we picked up was an in-op and we literally had to push it so we were there for an hour and a half which killed an hour and a half of his day so, you know, that all, you got to consider all that in there, too, when you're figuring out how much per mile you're making, because you only have so much time in a week. Your time is worth something, too. You know, these people that do it for 30 cents a mile, you know, it, that's great, but you kill the rates for everybody else. And you're really not helping yourself. Yeah, you're getting a check at the end of the week, but you also got to look at how much more you spent, too. And if that's something that, you know, there's uh, a lot of guys on the comments already on some of the previous videos. There's a lot of questions about the back holes. And if you want to... Can get over to this car. Right there. If you kind of... Single pulls is way easier. Yes, it's... There's less money in it. It's... It's way... You, just, you call your dispatcher. You pick your load. You go pick it up. You go deliver it. You head back. It's... It's real easy. And it's still good money. I did it for a year. We just switched over to multi haul this summer. And if you want something that's kind of an in-between, you don't want to pull a 53-foot trailer around, you don't want to deal with a bunch of cars, and you want to go sightsee, I would say haul and tow is probably your best bet. You're just you're gonna go pick up your campers, only have to, you know, like I said, have the hassle of one car. Yeah, you're not making as much, but with the haul and tow, you're probably not burning much more fuel with the vehicle on there a little bit more but you know you got the cab of your truck blocking most of the wind it depends if you got you know, like a 5500 like a pickup or if you're using a semi a car or a pickup on the back of that semi it, i don't know it probably will not affect your uh, fuel mileage at all so that'd be my recommendation if you kind of want to get into multi-haul but you still want to have the freedoms i guess if you want to call it of single pulls multi-haul with, with the with the haul and tow would be my recommendation. Like I said, everyone's got different thoughts. Everyone wants to be a little, everything a little different. But that's just kind of how we do it. This is a great way to travel, you know, to see the U.S., Canada. Um, you know, when he started out in single pole, we went to Arizona. I have family there. So after we dropped the camper, we stayed for a couple extra days, went to the Grand Canyon. You know, and it pretty much pulling that camper down there paid for our vacation. Yep. So, you know, you just got to kind of figure out what is it for you, whether you're in it to stay on the road, make money, you know, or you want to have that freedom, too, of being able to actually sightsee. Because pulling this big trailer around, there's not much sightseeing. You know, I made the mistake. Uh, we went to, I took a load to Phoenix, and uh, the family went to went to Zion and so I went down I took a load to Phoenix and then I dead headed up to Zion and I made the mistake of taking highway 86 I got to 86 straight north and that was an awesome route so if you ever get the chance I would take a drive on 86 go see Zion yeah. Zion is absolutely beautiful um, we went at the wrong time we had an active shooter um, in the town when uh, when we went, so we were stuck there till about.
about 10 o'clock at night, but I mean, there's really no other better place to be stuck because it's beautiful and there's thousands and thousands of miles of trails. It's a... Uh, Side-by-side -side trails, ATV trails. Yep, hiking trails. It, it's a must-see. Zion's beautiful. But if you want to take Highway 86 and see some really good views, I don't recommend having a 53-foot trailer behind you. That was, that was my bad. <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson learned there. Yeah, if you're doing single pulls, 86 would be an awesome route. If you got a multi-haul, uh, or a, a multi-haul, uh, all in tow, I would definitely, definitely recommend taking Highway 86 for a little scenic tour. It's, it's pretty much an all-day drive, and uh, <laughs> there's, there's some uh, sketchy roads there. There's some curves that I had to make. Uh, my tire was almost, there's no guard railing on some of the curves. Speed limit's like 25, I think, 35 possibly. Going around some of these curves going up the mountain. And there's no guard railing, so you literally drop your front tire off the blacktop and the shoulder is not much wider than your tire is. And uh, when you're making the curve, your trailer is dog tracking about two feet into the other lane. I was going around one and I was literally having the thought that if I ever meet a semi with the trailer coming around one of these curves, I'm like, I am. I am SOL. I literally just had this thought and I met a semi and he was going down and he was going way too fast. He was pulling a, a step deck with a bunch of the cement barricades like in between the lanes on the interstate. And I, I got a glimpse of his face for a split second and I was thinking his seat was just as dirty as my seat. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't look in the mirrors, I just kept looking straight forward once I passed him so I didn't drive the tires off the shoulder, but I definitely gave him as much room as I possibly could. This trailer had to be real close to touching the bluff going straight up. But we just want to talk to you guys a little bit about rates, so you guys are kind of interested like what rates are, what are, are doing for the cars and back walls. There are a lot of loads there at that 30, 40, 50 cent mark. But you can get good paying ones. You just gotta. It takes time. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. You I gotta... spend three to four hours a day looking at the load board for him, trying to, you know, he lets me know where he's going. And I look every day, even, you know, once I find the loads that I'm pretty well set on that I want, the next day I get up and I check the load board again because there could be something better. You know, and you don't have to book right away if you know you're not going to be there till Thursday, you know, but that's a gamble too because the load could be gone, but you know, do yourself a favor, deal with the brokers, you know, a lot of them will come up, there's not very many of them that I call that won't come up a little bit, but you have even, to ask yeah, because... Even if you can get them to come up 25 bucks, 25 bucks is 25 bucks, it literally took you five seconds to hang, be like, hey, can you come up to this? Yeah. We usually start at 50, and I'd say Depending, yep. 50 to 75% of the time, we can get them up another 50 bucks. Yep. Almost all the time, they'll come up $25. Unless you're in like, yeah, I don't know, Denver seemed to be our hardest area. Them brokers, we had so many loads of 30, 31 cents. You even mentioned something, and they're just instantly, nope. And that's, that's the end of it. So you're gonna have that. The other thing you can do is just make relationships with guys. Um, there's a couple guys now that I have that they're going to call me. They buy cars from uh, IAA and we have one by Des Moines and Sioux Falls. And I took a load from Des Moines to this guy and he just does, he re 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 uh, rebuilds, words are hard, rebuilds cars in his garage as a hobby. So he's not going to be a high volume customer. The thing is, he's paying the, he's paying IAA, they're the ones that take care of shipping his cars for him. He's paying them $675 a car from Des Moines to, uh, I think he's just south of Chicago, I'm not sure exactly where he was at, but he's just south of Chicago. He's paying $675 per car out of Des Moines. And I could only get the broker up to $375. So I didn't tell him what I was getting paid, but he did mention to me when I stopped there that he they charge him six seventy five. So I made the comment to him, I'm like, well, I can do it for five fifty out of Des Moines, and if you get one out of Sioux Falls, I said, how about six fifty? And he was ecstatic with that because he's saving almost two hundred dollars depending on which location. He 
you're saving almost $200. So whenever he buys a car at an IAA auction, and if it's coming out of Sioux Falls or Sioux City, or Sioux Falls or uh, Des Moines, he's just gonna call me direct. So now he's saving money, I'm making more money. It's a win-win for both of us. And I've got two, three guys now, something like that. And like I said, they're not high volume people. They're not gonna be shipping a lot of cars all the time. But I'm not making trips, you know, every other day to Indiana. I'm only going out this way about once a week. I head out this way on Mondays. And then, you know, I try to get on by Friday or Saturday, so. But that's other, you know, other options too, you know. It's, it's, and it's gonna take time to get customers built up like that. I know there's guys that have that. You know, you see some of them guys on Facebook posts and, you know, they're all in, um, you know, trailer full of uh, pickup boxes. Or, you know, it, it's more freight than it is cars. But, you know, it, it'll take a while. It's not gonna happen overnight, but you can make relationships like that. And it's, that's really gonna benefit you in the long run is cutting the brokers out of it, getting the middleman out of it. And those are just the more simple ones too. You're talking to the actual customer right off the bat. So you know what's going on. You're not, you know, being the third party and getting bad information or mixed up information. But I think that's pretty much all we got for that. It's just kind of our two cents, how we do stuff. Uh, you guys can leave comments below, ask questions, and we can uh, And most of the brokers are really nice people too. You know, it's not like, you know, they're doing their job too. So they're out to make money also. It's not like they're rude on the phone, you know. Be respectful when you call people. They're just doing their job too. That's, that's another main thing. You know, most of these brokers answer the phone and you know, right off the bat, they're straight to the point because there's so many people that aren't respectful and, you know, there's no need to be rude. Like I had this lady, <laughs> it was Monday morning, I called her, her headset wasn't working. I could just kind of make it out a little bit, but she told me to hold on a second. It was about a minute later. And she asked me if that was working better. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's working. I can hear it now. And then her keyboard wasn't working. <laughs> and her mouse wasn't working. So I was on the phone with her for about 15 minutes. Yeah, it was, when you got like four or five loads you want to call on right away before they disappear. But I, know, I was kind of laughing with her and whatever, and she was sitting there thanking me for being patient with her and laughing and, and this and that. And she said that she gets yelled at all the time by people because she's not fast enough or they need answers right now or they're not going to wait or, you know. So, I mean, her job's frustrating too, but she's one of those that she said uh, she's going to keep my information. So, if she ever gets loads that are kind of like on my route, she said she was going to give me a call because she liked dealing with me. So that's another thing too. Make, you know, make relationships with the brokers. You don't have to make relationships with the direct customer. Yeah. Customers that, you know, you're, you can probably get more rate per mile. But at the same token, if if that broker pays well, make a good relationship with that broker. And, you know, a lot of times they're going to call you and that yeah. load's never going to hit the, the load board. They're just going to call you and book it through you directly. And the nicer you are to the brokers, the more they're going to work with you. Yeah. You just, you know... Everyone's busy. That's just life. You're you're not any more busy than the next person. So, you know, chill out and be nice. I get told that a lot by uh, by someone over here. <laughs> She's got way more patience than I got. You have to. When you're dealing with people, you have to be respectful and you have to have patience. Everyone has something going on in their life. I think that's about all we've got for this little clip. Uh, like I said, you have to leave comments below, ask questions. 
campers picked up. Uh, Amazon, they got us again. It was supposed to be a Ford Transit van. I double checked several times and we get there and it's the box truck again. So that was another two hours of my life down the drain, never to return. Um, but the, the uh, BMW we had, BMW we had, uh, that went a lot easier than loading. No, at least the we could, no, the BMW is the one that didn't Oh, run. yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had to unload that one on the road. Had an officer stop and tell us we couldn't park there. So we had to rush that one. But, uh, the Volkswagen we had, that was an awesome one. If they all went like that, life would be great. We had that thing loaded and we're out of there in 10 minutes. Unloaded and we're out of there in six and a half minutes. So, so yeah, we lost the Amazon van, so we dropped the, the load out to Indiana from about $1,675 down to $1,225, and we ended up with $825. So, it wasn't the greatest week. Didn't work how we planned. Um, last week we did really, really, really well, so I suppose it kind of averages out a little bit. But, but I think we're going to end this one here. Unless you got anything else to add. And we talked, uh, talked to you guys quite a bit in this one about uh, backhauls and cars, so uh, you should get a lot of that, of that. I'm sure that's going to raise a lot of questions too, but we are now loaded with the campers. We're heading toward Texas, and we will see you in the next one. Warmer weather. Warmer weather. <laughs>